This week I'm experimenting again and I call this the process and although most things turn out as I kind of imagine them to in my head, sometimes there are fails and I will be showing you all of these fails and there's quite a few mistakes and without fixes it wouldn't be that interesting and I hate wasting materials so I always try my best to fix them. At the same time I'll be showing you some gorgeous gift ideas that I've started on for the holidays and uh, for those of you who know epoxy resin well by now you know it takes at least 21 days for a full cure before you can use them. So with that in mind I'm starting early before wrapping them all. So I'm going to do my best to explain the process should you wish to try the same technique out. So I'll be in and out with commentary and back at the end with some final touches and the big reveal. For this first project I've already done a very similar version in my last video and I wanted to create a whole set. I'm using some chrome cracks for the stones and some dusty pink pigment paste and with that some ethereal pigment powders from my now favourite the uh, White Aura Box by Mrs Colorberry and I will list all the colours and the links in the description box under this video for you. And you might think why I have some odd numbers of coasters etc but uh, I have specific people in mind when creating all of these so although this is a process and experimentation I don't actually like to just put them on the shelf and never use them again so usually with my processes I have someone in mind if it's not for myself it's usually for some friends presents etc so this will be quite a long video as I've got quite a few lovely gorgeous Christmas and holiday gifts ideas for you. I usually like to do these in real time so you can uh, feel the actual process as I'm doing them. Um, however, um, for the next few videos I might just speed them up ever so slightly without deteriorating too much from the actual process so that you still get an idea of how you can replicate this at home. And if you do replicate these and you're inspired by any of my ideas, I would absolutely love it if you could mention my name, just tag me in in any of your social medias. That would make me extremely happy and also it will let me know who's watching. Now, although I've got some glue in this bottle, you really can use any type of glue um, that you have lying around. It's preferable to use a transparent glue. Um, so even if you do use some sort of white glue, do make sure that it's completely transparent and not like sort of slightly milky once it's dried. And the biggest piece of advice I can give you is to wait until the glitter glue is completely dry before moving on to the next step. It's not advisable to pour uh, resin over glue. It really doesn't um, gel very well. They're not a good combination. So let it dry completely before you swipe off any of the excess glitter. You don't need a particularly thick layer of top coat but I would do at least one. And a top coat um, is a, always a really good idea when you've added a layer of glitter otherwise it will eventually just wear away and fall off.
And if you stay until the end of the video, I'll show you the final reveal and some sexy glamour shots. And because these are really ornate, I'm not going to bother with any gold gilding on the edges. I'm just going to leave them natural. I've done quite a few of these centerpieces in this gorgeous flower shape and I bought this mold from Amazon and I have been asked to produce one in this gorgeous purple color or rather a friend of mine asked me if I would do her a purple one so I'm very happy to oblige and have some fun with these uh, pigment powders once again and the actual process of this is kind of you could do this double-sided and I was trying to experiment at some point you'll see me um, on the top layer add some cracks some purple cracks just to see what that would do but at the end I preferred the other side I'm also using one of the ghost powders from the uh, white aura box and this has got a sort of a purpley tinge to it and I thought this would go really well with the rubine plum and I love this color I'll have to do a bunch of coasters to match these because this color is just simply gorgeous but this really does make a really wonderful gift for someone and you can almost put anything you like in the middle and for this particular version I wanted something shaped sort of in a bowl shape almost like the petals folding up on the sides And the only reason I'm putting a top coat is because I decided at the last minute to try out some of these purple cracks in the center and um, I couldn't very well leave it like that. It needed to be uh, covered with a uh, coat of uh, clear coat. But if you were doing this yourself and you didn't do this extra step, this would be the moment in which you could start to shape it. So this is the moment I realized that um, because I'd done the extra coat and I did left it overnight it wasn't bendy enough but I do have a solution for this and it's um, quite a handy trick when you want to shape resin um, but it's not quite fully cured um, but it's not really bendy enough and the best way I found of doing this is actually to run a hot tap of water and just put it underneath for maybe two minutes or so and this will um, loosen the resin a little bit not so much that it becomes melted but that it just bends a bit more and you do have to do the bending quickly after you've put it under the hot tap because as it cools down it starts to harden up again pretty fast And for this gorgeous gift set, I'm using some silver cracks for the stones, ocean blue pigment paste, and again, some gorgeous white aura pigment powders, all by Mrs. Colorberry. For some extra sparkle, what I'm doing here is just sprinkling on a little bit of this holographic glitter, which is also included in the white aura box. And this just gives it a little bit of bling. I'm not usually um, one to blame their tools but in this particular case I wasn't really impressed with this new mold that I got I got it from Amazon and I wanted a sort of a trinklet dish but I wanted something that was a little different to everything I've seen around and um, so I chose this shape it's an oval shape but it's really particularly difficult to get down the sides and I found that there were an enormous amount of micro bubbles on the side and I had even more trouble with this mold um, in another gift idea further along in this video
But for the matching coasters, I have so much more luck with these gorgeous Kintsugi style coasters. And I'm just using the exact same techniques. I do want them to match. And again, I do have someone specifically in mind for these, which is why there is only one of each coaster size. And uh, not everybody wants a set of six or a set of four. Sometimes just one each is more than enough. And I absolutely love the way these uh, silver cracks fall to the bottom. Um, so eventually you could choose either side if you preferred. You didn't have to use the um, underside. Sometimes when I unmold, I actually prefer the top side. Now it's normal to get some sort of micro bubbles on the underneath of it, but um, that's quite normal because it's quite difficult to get your heat gun or your torch lighter um, on the base of it. And since they're homemade, it, it's okay. But as I said before, I did get lots of um, micro bubbles along the edges. I forgot to show it here because I forgot to film it, but I did get some and that was the, um, that was the most annoying part of this. But other than that, I think it came out really well. So I wanted to do the exact same coasters as I did previously, just using some greens. And the pigments in the white aura box, they kind of all look white to the eye. So I came up with this colour chart um, by painting on some acrylic varnish and just a sample of each pigment. And then I painted them numbered onto a piece of black cardstock. And so this allows me to match the pastes to a powder for that opalesque look. I absolutely love these shades of green. This is an opal green and the others a mint love and I just have to try them out. And uh, plus I know someone who likes green. And for just a little change, instead of using some gold gilding in between these Kintsugi cracks, I am using some glitter glue or just some regular transparent glue and lots of glitter. And I've chosen a sort of a teal glitter to match this mint love. I've been really into drying my own flowers lately and I use silica gel. It's quite simple, you need to take a bowl and you take your fresh flowers and you immerse them in the silica gel and you leave them for a couple of days and then you kind of gently fish them out because they are quite delicate once they're dried. 
and I'm going to use this in two of these round molds. I'm going to do um, a version, a larger version, a plate version and a coaster version. And I'm going to use a selection of um, pigment pastes. I've got some citronella, some ivory and some white. And I'm going to just do some really acute background. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I've tried it upside down and I had loads of air pockets at the top. So I'm going to do it this way and see how it works. And um, you'll see something didn't quite go right and I'll explain to you at the end what happened. The best time to add your flowers in is when it's slightly tacky and that would be about a couple of hours after. But I left it a little bit too long and I could have done it a little earlier because it wasn't quite tacky. But this does work if you also use glue, if you've waited too long for it to be tacky. Come the next day just use a little glue and you can push all of your flowers down and the reason you need to do this before the top coat is if you don't do this, your dried flowers will float to the top and that can be really annoying. And this is the last one, I promise. And for this one, I really wanted something that looked a little bit more natural, less blingy, not so much glitter, and something a little bit more modern, contemporary. Um, this one was a real fail. And once again, I'm using this mold, this trinket dish mold. I'm not a fan of it, and you'll see why at the end. As you can see, I'm trying my best to get right inside of this mould, right down the sides to avoid any air pockets. So I had a little bit of uh, the colours left over, of the resin left over, so I decided to make a little candle plate. I love these candle plates. I usually uh, match them with a crystal cluster that I make from a mould that I bought from Art for Start. And she does the most amazing quality moulds. And I always do my best to find an excuse to use them.
So as you can see, despite my best efforts to avoid bubbles down the sides of these, I got quite a few. And they're not just tiny little ones, they're huge ones. And I was really disappointed because the actual pattern that came out was gorgeous. I loved it. But of course, I'm not going to leave it like this. I will find a way to upgrade it or upcycle it in some way or other. But as you can see, this gorgeous candle plate came out really well, except for that one naughty little blob of pink glitter that found its way into the middle. I have no idea how it got there. Other than that, I love it. I do like to do a little bit of polishing on my resin, especially if I've, um, um, in this case, moulded it and um, I've left a lot of my fingerprints on it, a little bit of grease, etc. And I'm just using some food safe grade furniture polish. It's actually wood polish. And I'm just using a microfiber cloth and I'm giving it a good old buffing. And you could use this little attachment that I buy from Amazon that you can attach to a driller with a little buffing pad. Look at that lovely shine. So to finish off the sides, I am going to be using Mrs. Colorberry's newest highlighter pens. Just matching the gold in the middle, and um, as I did with the white aura box, I've done a little sample of each color so I know what they give on that same black cardstock. I have chosen this really gorgeous color. I mean, it's one of my favorite of her highlighter pens. It's just a subtle shade of gold. And as I said, this makes a perfect centerpiece for any table, any little coffee table, or if you have a um, veranda, you could put it there, it would match your orchid plants. So for this selection I am using the silver highlighter pen and I'm only going to go around the candle holder because I think the others are, have more than enough embellishments and they don't need any more. And this really does make the perfect tea set gift for any loved one. And this are the green versions of this, the one with the glitter, which I think came out really well. And then the gold gilding Kintsugi style coasters. And for this last set, I'm using the rose gold highlighting pen. And here is fail number two. I got some wrinkles right in the middle of my cured piece and I was not too happy, I can tell you. There are two solutions for this. You could do a top coat and before that you'd need to sand it down or you can do the sanding technique which means you'd have to go from a low grit to a higher grit. But because this video is already really really long I will keep that for a tips and tricks for my next video and I'll show you the entire process on how to get rid of any wrinkles, I mean blush, blooms, anything like that, any scratches on the top of any of your resin pieces. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and that you've turned on your notifications so you are informed of my next uploaded video. I hope you've enjoyed this, I've really had a lot of fun with this process. Some fails, but you know what they say, without any fails, life isn't very interesting. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.